With job cuts, follow extensions and new working habits developing across the continent, many employers and job seekers are looking for guidelines to help them understand where opportunities are available and how to prepare for the future of work. The impact of COVID-19 job reports explore factors such as trending industry sectors, uh, industries or sectors, uh, trending roles, trending skills, trending salaries and benefits. I like that. Mm -hmm. Major trends caused by COVID-19 and job market trends and forecasts for Nigeria, Ghana, as well as Kenya. And here to tell us all about the future of work is the group head of product Rome Africa Jobs, uh, Tunde Adenua. Thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning. Thank you for having me, Adesua. Glad to be here. Indeed. Well, the pandemic has changed uh, our way of life, uh, especially the way we do work. This a culture shift a few of us saw coming. But tell us, before we go into the report proper, uh, just how well are we coping on the continent with this new way of work? Well, I, I think it, it's been pretty much challenging. There's really no, no way to paint it. Um, it's been very challenging. Um, of course, as you know, globally, um, the way we work has really shifted from um, going into the office every day to working remotely. Um, in some organizations where you really need to have people come into the office, you know, they have some sort of um, scheduling system where you don't necessarily have to go in every day, right? Or you, you only go for limited hours. So at the end of the day, you, you have uh, the, the bulk of the working class population working from home, and that has a, a triple effect in terms of infrastructure, internet infrastructure, for example. You could see that with the telcos, in their annual reports, they all noted the fact that data subscriptions had gone up, right? Especially from the fact that with people working from home, they need more data for calls and they need more data to, to join meetings. And of course, the, the power situation is there as well. In, in Africa, generally, um, especially in Nigeria, you, you don't have constant power, so employees need to figure out ways to provide um, constant power for themselves, especially during work hours so they could be online. And a couple of other things that, that, that came up, for example, if you have kids, you know, your kids can't go to school, you have to work from home, how do you manage that, right? So a, a lot of challenges um, came up, right, due to the pandemic, but I think that um, generally speaking, people have found a, a way to cope. Um, and just a way to, to make do with the situation that no one could have expected. It does seem as though we've gone from a situation that was already quite tense and definitely seeing it get worse. And I, I know that's not unique to Africa or definitely not new, unique to Nigeria because uh, as a result of this pandemic, lots of people across the world have suffered when it comes to work, security, being able to continue making a living. But if we were to focus on Africa, for example, we know that the World Economic Forum has already said that, well, the World Economic Forum's uh, Human Capital Index already refers to the fact that Sub-Saharan Africa only captures around 55% of its human capital potential, and that's compared to a global average of around 65%. When we put those numbers into context and now add the, the ramifications of this pandemic, surely it does seem as though it's not going to be a, 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 a positive time for Africa in terms of uh, labor captivity and the job markets. Do you agree with that? I, I would say to, to a large extent, I do agree with that. Um, Africa has um, the, a very large section of its population below the age of 25. I think it's about 60%, especially sub-Saharan Africa. So we're a very young continent on the average. Um, the other challenge you find is that there's a huge uh, talent gap and skill shortage, right? So you have people, but well, you have people who are not trained for certain roles that employers would typically would, would like to, to recruit or employ for. And, and that presents a, a situation whereby you, you have some sort of shortage in terms of what the World Economic Forum refers to. And it's really because if, even though you have human beings, you have people, we have a large population, that population is, is not skilled in, in certain areas like digital, for example. And it's, it's largely representative of the fact that you have a huge gap in terms of what employers want to hire for and the kind of skills that the people on ground have available. Mm. And just looking at the report and summary of it, uh, quite interesting. But I guess that's the work you're here to do. So uh, 
if you were to really summarize this report, uh, what jumps at you really on the impact of COVID-19 on the continent of Africa when it regards work and job opportunities? So I would say the, the report focuses on two sides of the story. Um, there's a story for employers to pick out and there's a story for job seekers to pick out. Um, I will start with the employer bits. Um, on the employer side, um, the, the report really details the, the impact of COVID from several perspectives. For example, let, let me start with compensation. You, you would see that um, the report details the fact that there's been a shift in the way employers compensate employees. So, for example, you have certain allowances that previously did not exist coming up. So things like uh, maybe data allowance or things like child care allowance. And more employers are also paying attention to mental wellness and mental health. Right. So of course, working from home also has um, a series of challenges that it presents to your mental well-being. Right. The fact that you can't even go out, right? Um, employers are paying more attention to that and offering some trainings and some benefits and packages in that area. And, and with respect to childcare, right, for employees who have kids at home, right, um, employers are also um, having those benefits. And also, generally speaking, we are seeing more of uh, short-term contracts coming up, right, where employers say they only want to recruit um, an employee for a three-month or a six-month window and that's largely due to the uncertainty in the space right there's a lot of uncertainty in the space employers don't necessarily want to lock in um, all their employees to full-time contracts anymore so you you, you have um, a situation whereby there's a lot of of demand right for contract-based roles now moving to the job seeker side of things um it's very interesting for job seekers, um, the reports, especially from the perspective of how am I getting myself ready, right, for the future, and how can I key into the opportunities that COVID-19 has brought up, right? Because even though we want to look at it from the perspective of COVID-19 being all gloomy and, and, and all that, there's still opportunities that have come up that job seekers can leverage on, right? So for example, a lot of employers right now are really stressing on, on digital, right, because even um, organizations have had to digitalize many of their processes, right, so employers are looking for skills in the, in the realm of data science, in the realm of analytics, in the realm of digital marketing and social media management, right, in, in, in the realm of digital technology, broadly speaking, right, so for example, you would find that in, in, in not even in Nigeria, Africa and even globally, for example, there's really a ramp up in terms of mobile banking services and USSD services because contactless is a new thing, right, in that financial space, right? So for people who have um, skill sets that would support contactless service delivery, right, um, an employer in that space would really be interested. And it's, it's not just the banks or the, the companies and the financial institutions, right? Generally speaking as well, um, there's been a ramp up for, for digital skills. Um, we've seen that ramp up on our, on our platforms, Jobaman in Nigeria and Ghana, and Brighter Monday in uh, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And it's really an opportunity for, for job seekers to sit back and assess themselves and say, okay, um, the skills I have today, are they future-proof, right? Can I use them this year? Can I use them next year? Um, are those the skills that employers are requesting for? Indeed. Well, I wanted to speak a bit more about Rome itself. I know that there is a huge inundation of people looking for jobs. So when you have a situation where you put in a listing for a specific job, you will have a whole heap of applicants looking for it. And I'd imagine that for a platform like yours, that's a good thing. But looking at the research that we've done, it does seem as though lots of people uh, of recent are applying for jobs that they may not specifically have the experience or the skill set for? Uh, I mean, an easy answer would be to say that the, the pandemic has made people a lot more desperate and you're definitely casting your net a lot wider when you're in a job hunt. But when it comes to the quality of job seeking, do you think that that does a platform like yours a disservice in the long run? Well, I, I think that I will corroborate what you, what you just said. Um, about 60% of the applicants on our platform, we see that they don't qualify for the roles. Um, th th that's due to a, a number of things. One is, of course, a lot of people have lost their jobs, so the, there's a lot of more unemployment and underemployment in the space currently. Um, and of course, that means that uh, you have more people who want to get back into the job market or people who want to get into the job market newly. Um, and then you'll find that the competition, right, for the few jobs out there 
has really increased. So, for example, you would see that um, in the report, you would see that with some jobs, we had over 2,000 job applicants, right? And they are probably looking to hire just one person. So that's intense competition. On the average, though, we, we, we typically see about 130 to 150 uh, job applicants uh, per row. Um, so there's really intense competition. And I think there's the element with job seekers of just trying to lock. Um, maybe some of the job seekers who are faith-based would, would want to um, apply their faith and, and try to see if they could get the role. Um, but, but, but largely, I think it also spells out the huge imbalance between the skill sets that employers want to hire for and the skill sets that job seekers present. And I, I think for, for job seekers out there, it's really an opportunity for them to reskill and upskill, right, to better align themselves with uh, those skill sets that employers want to, to hire for. So it's not too late to rethink career options at this point? No, it's not. It's not too late. Okay. Now's um, the best time. Mm. And as with everything with this pandemic, even though it's a single pandemic, it has become more like different strokes for different folks. Um, why there was a decline in hiring in some places, according to the report, there was an uptick in other sectors. But I want to ask you, was that a general trend across the continent? I think it was. So, for example, in the healthcare space, you would find out that Virtually every country who was impacted by COVID had to hire a lot more people for contact tracing roles, for example. And that's typically a contract-based uh, role, but you, you ideally would need to have some health background, right? So you would see that there was a, a really huge ramp up in healthcare, right? Because uh, just generally speaking, governments and NGOs supporting governments um, had to hire a lot of people to not just treat uh, people who, who got sick, but also to try to identify um, others who may be spreading the COVID-19 disease, right, which we call contact tracers. Um, so contact tracing is, is a job role that we saw, like, really um, amplify, right, due to COVID. And in other industries as well, we've seen a shift, right? So, for example, we, we see companies hiring a, lo a lot of people in the sales roles, especially people who have uh, telesales capabilities, right? Telesales is um, you've been able to call an employer by phone and sell to the employer remotely, right? Um, so employers shifting focus from actual um, skills that involve physical selling to digital selling, right? You're selling online or you're selling via a phone call or you're selling, selling via email, in which case you're hiring someone for tele sales or you're hiring someone for digital marketing or you're hiring someone for, for customer experience and customer service, right? Um, so definitely you, you, we've had a situation whereby um, skill sets that require f um, physicality for, for delivery um, have seen a ramp down. Our skill sets that are digitally savvy that can be um, where you can sort of measure outcomes or you can sort of deliver value through the internet or remotely have seen some form of uh, ramp up. Hmm. I wanted to, again, I don't want to get too deep into the business of Rome, Africa, yeah. but I, I can't imagine that uh, Rome itself hasn't been hit by the pandemic, by the effects of it. I know that you're, the, the company itself is solutions-based. You're looking for a job. We'll come onto our platform and we'll help you do that. How have you been negatively impacted by the, the pandemic, if at all? Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think it's really hard to find anyone who hasn't been impacted right um negatively right it, it, it's also it's more that you may have uh, retweaked your business strategy to uh, dampen that negative impact one of the things that we had to do to respond um to the pandemic was to make it free for employers to list their jobs on our platforms right we typically would charge a, a anywhere from um 25 dollars to 40 dollars from mm -hmm. a country to country basis so for example in nigeria you pay about 10,500, right um to list your job but from March, um, because of the pandemic, we had to make it free. And, mm. and the goal of that, we, we, we know that only about 30% of hiring happens online today, right? The majority of hiring. It is time for us to take a very short break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Arise News. 
where we are, of course, hosting the morning show. Still with us is the group head of products at Rome Africa, uh, Tunde Adeniro. Tunde, I'm so sorry we did crash to a break while you were in the middle of your answer there. Just to remind yourself and our viewers, we were discussing uh, Rome's personal experience with the pandemic. And you, were, you had already said that I think any of us would struggle to find a company or any person who hasn't been impacted by the virus. If you could continue on, on your point there. Um, we looked at the situation of things and, and we looked at the data that was available to us at that point in time. I mean macroeconomic data in terms of projections and, and impact to the economy. And one of the things we decided to do early on in March was to take our listings free, whereby we sort of encouraged employers to transition from offline to, to online. right? Um, and the reason why we had to do that was because we, we, we know the fact that um, only about 30% of recruitment happens online. Right? So you still have a lot of um, employers who list their jobs in newspapers and magazines, for example, or just through plain old referrals. Right? So there's a lot of activity that's happen happening outside of the internet in the physical space. And of course, due to COVID, there's a lot of restrictions around that. Right? So we, we said to ourselves, well, what's the best way to, to, to encourage that transition to digital? Right? And one, one of the ways we, we thought to execute that was to make it free to list on our platforms across our different countries. So Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, um, and Senegal as well. And the, the impact of that we, is that we saw a, a huge bump, right, in terms of employers shifting focus from, of course, the offline methods, which they, they were already used to, to, to the online methods, right? So, so for us, that was turning a negativity into a, a positive thing, right? Um, of course, we had to um, reshift our, our business model because um, revenue was... was um, was something that we weren't so focused on at that point in time, otherwise we wouldn't have taken that decision to go free. Um, but just, just looking at um, being supportive of the ecosystem as a whole, Africa's ecosystem as a whole, um, it, it's, a, it's a decision we, we, we made and I think it was a very good decision because we, we could then see that employers uh, were still recruiting, right? Um, of course, the, the kind of roles they were recruiting for um, switched or changed. Right, but they were still recruiting, and you still have a lot of job seekers who got jobs in the pandemic. Right, so it, it was a it was a joy for us to to make that happen and just support the ecosystem as a whole. How noble of you to have done free listing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wondering, uh, are there any other solutions you are offering? Maybe not free. Uh, to better equip job seekers uh, post-pandemic or even during this pandemic, because really none of us know when it will be over, uh, despite the rollout of vaccines in some countries. Uh, so are there any other solutions you're offering to make, you know, the workspace better for employers, employees, and any job seekers better equipped? Yeah, so we have a lot of initiatives. We have a lot of initiatives for, for employers, right, to help them find the right candidates and job seekers. So, for example, on our platform, we had to rethink um, the process for recruitment, right? So um, we had to digitize the assessment product, right? So, for example, on our platforms on Jobaman in Nigeria and Ghana, Brighter Monday in Kenya, Uganda, um, employers can run uh, digital assessments for job seekers, right? And that means that the job seeker doesn't have to go out to risk himself, right, to do a test, right? He could do this test from his mobile phone or from his lap for his laptop. Now, for job seekers, we have a whole lot going there as well. We're not just helping job seekers find jobs, right? We're also very involved in upskilling job seekers. And one of the things that we have done is to provide job seekers with free employability and soft skills training, right? And we run those trainings on different platforms. We run it on Telegram. We run it on a platform called Thinkific. Um, we've also partnered with Coursera, um, the global um, online learning platform, to offer this training to job seekers. So um, any job seeker who wants to get employability, employability skills or soft skills training, and it's a whole long list of things they are going to learn. You're going to learn um, um, presentation skills, you're going to learn negotiation skills, you're going to learn workplace skills, you know, very long list of um, training catalog that we have put together internally within the Jobberman uh, Nigeria team. Um, Job seekers can get this training for free, and it, it really gives them a sense of um, how to best position themselves um, even when, when they get a job. So it, it's something that job seekers do not have to pay for. It's free, um, and um, they can actually um, register, sign up, and start the training. And we've set ourselves a target to train 5 million people over the next five years. We are doing this in partnership with the MasterCard Foundation. 
Um, so we set ourselves a target to, to, to train 5 million youths in Nigeria between the ages of 18 to 35. These youths will get absolutely free training, um, training around employability and soft skills. And as time goes on, we, we hope to also extend that into digital skills, right? So that we can also better upskill these individuals to give them a higher chance of, of getting a dignified work opportunity. I mean, that definitely sounds like really good work being done. And I hate to drag this conversation topic to the gutter because we were doing so well. <laughs> However, you know, you were talking about all of the different skills that, you know, are needed skills that you provide. And it, it, just, struck, it just struck in my ear as we were talking their customer service. Here in Nigeria, I'm like, I love Nigeria. I love being Nigerian. However, when it comes to customer service, I think, I think... Nigeria is among the, um, the places in the world I've been to where I've experienced the worst customer service. So when we looked at this report and we found out that uh, customer service and support uh, was the most declining job function, not only in Nigeria, but in Ghana too, uh, with around 2% uh, in Ghana and 5% in Nigeria, I just thought, well, wow, that is true, isn't it? That's definitely my experience. What do you think can be done to uh, alleviate those negative numbers and, of course, boost Nigeria and Ghana's uh, profile when it comes to extending a higher level of customer service? Well, so, so I think that's, uh, that data can speak to many things. Um, maybe it's, and this is just me hypothesizing, right? So maybe it speaks to the fact that employers do not pay a lot of attention to customer service, right? That's theory one. Um, another theory we could also explore is it could potentially speak to the fact that there's been a transition in how employers think about customer service. And I think this is more likely it, whereby um, a, a lot of employers are transitioning from physical customer service where you have someone behind a desk to somebody who is, who is working from home, right? Um, and it, it, it's, there's no way to sugarcoat it, right? Um, the customer service culture in Nigeria, West Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa as a whole is not as mature as um, what it is in advanced countries, right? So in many cases, if, even when um, you have a customer service rep, is that person like appropriately trained? Does that person show empathy to, to customers? You know, um, if, you, if you gauge the experience between um, working into a, a business here or working into a business in some other countries where they have that customer service culture, you, you would also notice it, which you've alluded to, Femi. You'd also notice it that um, there's a huge, mm -hmm. huge gap, right? And those are some of the things that we cover, right, in, in the employability and soft skills training, which job seekers themselves looking to go into that space can take up, right, to say, how do you show empathy? How do you, um, how do you improve your emotional and intelligence skills, right? Because customer service requires high EQ, right? You need to be able to sense the emotions of the person you're talking to so that you know that you don't speak with a loud voice or you know that you, you can persuade the person who is angry to, to take a more softer tone. Um, th th those are the ways that we are helping um, job seekers position themselves. And it's not just job seekers, actually. People who already have um, w working opportunities can also take the training and basically use it to um, improve themselves as a whole. Well, thank you very much, Tunde Adeniron Group, Head of Products, Rome, uh, Africa Jobs. Uh, insightful uh, conversation we've had this morning. Much appreciated.